You see, I need my payday. Three. Payday three. It's finally here, and it's functional at least 20% of the time. A new record for modern game releases. We got clowns. We got cars. We got cars hitting clowns and clowns hitting women. We got me spinning this guard around to give him a little smooch. Mwah. We got my war crime bathroom populated by hostages and a 50 cal bathtub. And last but not least, we got the main event. Drum roll, please. The real video game. Matchmaking era, baby! Woo! As many of you may know, Payday 3 had a bit of a disastrous launch. I'll get into that in just a second, but besides the matchmaking issues, people ask me, Verrock, is the game itself any good? Should I play it? Please give me my opinion, I'm scared. Don't worry, I have all the best opinions and I'm here to let you have them too. Should you play Payday 3? Maybe! And I'm gonna tell you why. Payday, for those of you who don't know, is a series where you and three other people don clown masks and get into all sorts of juggalo shenanigans. For example, robbing banks, drinking Fago, taking hostages, giving me weed unprompted on my first camping trip. Thanks, Jordan. Anyway, you go on heists, shoot some cool guns, and have a gay old time. I've been playing since the first game in the series when Dallas was one step away from looking like Doug Dimido, and I was looking forward to this third entry in the series. Now. Unfortunately, Payday 3 got into some trouble with its release. Why? Well, the fine people at Starbreeze Studios made the bold choice to have Payday 3 be an online-only title. What does this mean? Well, it means if your internet goes out, or if your family pet and or family dipshit chews through a wire, or if Starbreeze's internet goes out, you don't get to play at all. There is no offline gameplay of any kind. Meaning, if you want to even play solo, you need an internet connection. Born too late to explore the world. Born too early to get forcibly joked by a Tao. Born just in time to require matchmaking to play completely alone! This decision to have Payday 3 be online only in a spat of cosmic justice was immediately punished when the game launched. So many people were trying to play that the servers could not handle it. Playing with friends? Down. Playing with randoms? Down. By yourself? Down. Doesn't matter, they all use the same servers and the system is down. The game was functional outside of regular US daytime hours because the bulk of the player base was asleep. Now, I have the luxury of having a completely obliterated sleep schedule, so I could play at 3 in the morning with the other 10 stinky Europeans online at the time. But for the thousands of people looking forward to this who have normal daytime jobs and wanted to unwind after work, Payday 3 was not playable. The game couldn't handle the load and forced most people into a main menu limbo. And this didn't just last a couple hours after the release, this went on for days. People were furious, panic, mass hysteria, a billion negative Steam reviews. A lot of people felt they had been scammed into spending at least $40 to look at a main menu all day, and many of those people refunded the game. And I don't blame them. It took almost a week, but as of writing this, the matchmaking issues have been largely sorted. The game is playable. You know, for now, fingers crossed. Starbreeze pointed the blame at an unnamed third-party matchmaking service provider. They said they're looking into having the game not be as reliant on online only, yada yada. I'm skeptical that they'll provide a fully offline mode, but I'll be happy to be proven wrong. Online only gameplay and its consequences have been disastrous for mankind, and that's the last thing I have to say about that. On to the actual game review, with one quick note before we begin. The sooner that every complaint in this video feels outdated because it's been fixed, the better. I am a fan of the Payday series, and I don't wish for its downfall. I'm here to explain to you how things are are now. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as I Verox explain all over you, <laughs> to you, I mean to you, about the Payday 3 launch experience. So first I hit this matchmaking button and then this error screen popped up. Okay, no, for real this time. First thing you'll notice is the heists you can play are split up into this sort of linear left to right story mode. They're going for something entirely different here and trying to present the heists in a linear fashion, emphasizing the story they created with the cutscenes in between each level. No offense to the writers, but as a payday veteran, allow me to be the first to say that I do not 
not give a fuck about the canon of any of these games. I just want interesting and exciting heists. They could throw Dallas into outer space and say, Dallas, you need to steal moon rocks. Look out, it's the Space Force. And I'd be fine with that. Give me more heists like No Mercy, where you steal blood from people who are about to turn into zombies and start the events of Left 4 Dead. Hey, hey, hold the goddamn door. You think just because you're wearing $5,000 suits you don't need to hold the door? Kids these days, I swear, no manners. That's real, by the way. I do appreciate, though, that they put the gameplay first. All the heists are available to play from the very beginning, with the cutscenes being more of a bonus unlockable for those who care. As for characters to choose from, let me trigger every Payday 2 player by saying, we're returning to heisting with the only four characters that matter. And their 12-year-old street urchin. And Ellen the Generous. They can come too. You'll get more options for your loadout later, so pick whatever equipment you like, slap a silencer on your pistol for free if you're a smelly stealth baby, and go queue up for your first game. So you get into the pre-game lobby. Some might call this phase of the game the planning phase, considering it's right before a big heist that requires some amount of cooperation and communication. There's just one problem. There's no Chat, voice or text, nothing. You literally can't plan in the planning phase of the game. I cannot believe the ability to communicate in the lobby would be an overlooked feature. I don't know how to emphasize enough. This is egregiously bad for a co-op game. Not to mention in Payday. For those who don't know, many Payday levels have a plan A, a plan B, sometimes even a plan C. This involves sometimes a stealth phase at the start. It's possible to complete most levels stealthily the whole way through. This is called going quiet, or being a little bitch baby. But if you get caught, the heist isn't over. You can still mask up, take out your shotgun, and smash and grab as much as you can carry to the getaway. Or maybe you want to skip the stealth altogether with your guns blazing from the very beginning of the heist. Both of these are called going loud. Whether you're in the mood to play quiet or loud, be prepared to have every game ruined by this lack of communication and pay day three. If you want to play stealth, someone's gonna mask up right away and ruin it. If you want to play loud, your other teammates want to play stealth and you're sitting there with no silence pistol and your fingers up your ass for 30 minutes. You can't ask what people are planning on doing before the game starts because in the planning phase, there is no way to plan. This is especially bad if you want to play loud from the beginning. Stealth is fun every once in a while, but sometimes you want to just walk straight into the bank with the giant hog scraping it on the floor and tell everybody to get down, you know, on the floor with your giant hog. <laughs> The problem is, you can do stealth alone, but you can't play loud alone. The AI will leave you to do your thing during stealth, but you need more than one person to really accomplish a loud mission on higher difficulties. There's just too many bags to carry and too many objectives to complete by yourself in a firefight on most levels. But the AI has paste in their mouths and paste in their guns and paste in their joints. They are useless. There's only one level that doesn't start out with stealth, by the way, so most people on most levels from my experience so far presume to do pure stealth the whole way through. Many times I was left wondering why I even had any new weapons to unlock, because I could never use them without disrupting the game for everyone else. The only weapon you will ever need in Payday 3 matchmaking is the starting silenced pistol. How fun! This would be so, so easily solved by putting a text chat in the lobby. I just want to join, type in loud, and they say yes, or if stealth fails, yes, great, I'll take that. They say no, then I know right away I'm dealing with people who'd rather dig around in a guard's ass for key cards for 30 minutes, and I could promptly leave without wasting time before I find another game. Not that I haven't dug around in there before, I'm just saying I unlocked a shotgun and I want to use it. <laughs> The other great anti-communication feature they've implemented here is that when you're in a game, there is a total lack of information on the HUD. You got armor, health, and the number of downs you have before you go into custody. That is it. No equipment, no grenades, no ammo, no number of hostages, nothing. Once again, I have no idea why it was designed this way, but this game has a hard on 
for making it difficult to communicate and cooperate with your teammates in this co-op game. Anyway, let's talk actual gameplay. It may surprise you to hear this after all of my complaining, but I actually like how the game feels. It's part of why the other stuff aggravates me, because there is potential here. The guns look and sound good. The movement is highly improved from previous games as well. Part of the fluidity is because Payday 3 is the first in the series to not be created on a fucking racing game engine. <laughs> now, just because it's improved from the last two mechanically doesn't mean there isn't bugs. It wouldn't be Payday if there wasn't some janky nonsense. There are some really heinous ones that are inexcusable. For example, my first time stealthing this mission with a friend, we were trying to give the bouncer our fake VIP passes to get downstairs. We did everything correctly, but the VIP passes simply did not work. Meaning successfully stealthing the mission in this way that the game intended was straight up impossible. Then there are lesser examples that are unobtrusive and they don't ruin the gameplay and they just make me laugh and I hope they never change them. I don't want to show all of them for risk of them all being found and fixed, but here's a personal favorite. When you're in stealth mode, everyone whispers their voice lines because obviously you're trying to be stealthy. However, if you're playing as Hawks and you use the I need a medic bag voice wheel option, he shouts it as loud as he possibly can. There's a guard. Watch the civ. It's a camera. I need a medic bag. It's a camera. I need a medic bag. Civilian. I need a medic bag. I need a medic bag. I need ammo. My plea to the developers is that they fix the obtrusive bugs but leave this one alone. Let's talk new features in Payday 3. When in combat, you can play footsies with the cops for a while to build up this meter over here. When full, press Z to execute your super. These supers are called overkill weapons and they're great. The starting one you have is a grenade launcher which is very good at killing civilians. The one you unlock a little later is an anti-material rifle which is very good at killing civilians. It'll kill just about everything in one hit and is very satisfying to shoot at shield enemies. Whereas the grenade launcher, while effective against enemies, will usually also make you kill you. Another new toy is the E button. You press this to call Dallas. Uh, uh, medic. I really like what they did with the special units in this game. Bulldozers are no longer just bullet sponges, they will tackle you like a fucking linebacker. Cloakers are extremely agile, will take you down in one hit, like in past games, but now they do it while gang stalking you, taking corners and running on walls to avoid being noticed. Tasers, snipers, and shields are essentially the same, but still effective. And there's even a new one called a nader. These guys throw poison gas that does 1 billion damage per second, even on the lowest difficulty. I like all of this. I want the specials to be intimidating, and I think they did a good job with that this time. I like the levels too. There's a good variety in the type of heist, and they throw in little gimmicks for each one to spice things up. Like the loot that has to stay cool and degrades over time, or the crypto wallet which wipes itself if you get caught before stealing it. People will bitch about not having this heist or that heist or wanting more, which is fair enough, there could always be more, but for the game's price point, they feel replayable enough to me that I'm satisfied. So, let's say you finish your first few heists, you've leveled up a bit, you have access to some new guns and new cosmetics to play with, and now some new skills too. There's a lot of skills to try out and they encourage you to mix and match them. The problem is, the skills are terribly balanced, as are the equipment items. There are some interesting abilities here, though, that are fun to try out. They use three mechanics called Rush, Edge, and Grit. They're all minor buffs, but they're used as tokens for stronger abilities that you unlock later on. For example, Rush gives you 10% faster move speed, which is nothing fancy on its own, but Rush is utilized strongly in the Grifter skill tree. This skill tree is meant to allow you to commit crimes unmasked in plain sight as long as you have Rush, which I think is a really fun idea. Because if you play it right with these skills, you can literally walk into the jewelry store and just start cutting things open and taking them. Because the skills make civilians and employees look away from illegal action, just as long as you have Rush. And you can gain Rush by standing near civilians in this skill tree, so it's not hard to get it. It's not a total cheat code, though. You still have to watch out for the guards and the cameras. So it's fun, but it's not completely broken. They tried to make fun ideas like that with the other skill trees, but they're just not very useful. 
I really want to utilize the takedown in human shield trees, but they're just too niche. For every player that diligently holds on to a human shield throughout a firefight and is reliant on that shield surviving to use their cool abilities, there's a player in full tank skill tree, me, who shoots that shield in the head accidentally while they're stomping around with more effective health than anybody else, cheating death and breaking out of specials by themselves. Now, people will complain that there's not enough guns, or skills, or not the guns and skills that they like, or all sorts of other shit about unlockable items that, I get the feeling, but in my opinion, don't matter as much as how you unlock these things. Because player progression in this game is tied to challenges, not heist completion. Allow me to explain the bold nature of this ingenious game design that they stole from Halo Infinite before it was changed there due to player outrage. Do you like leveling up in video games? Okay, complete this heist 150 times. Quiet. And then 150 times. Loud. Do you have a favorite gun? Well, you're throwing it in the trash once it gets a thousand kills, because if you stick with it, you will be receiving zero XP for weapons every mission. It got to the point where my friends and I started farming cops in a bathtub together and not really worrying about the objective, just so that we could get XP from leveling up weapons. As much as I enjoy cocking guns with the boys in our bathtub all day, it doesn't make up for this unfun grind. Here's my final word on it all. Gameplay? I love it. Balanced? Not even close. Online only? Awful. Communication features? Terrible and or absent to the point of being almost experience ruining. Progression system? Horrifying and successfully experience ruining. Despite being a longtime Payday fan, I cannot recommend Payday 3. At least, not in its current state. It's a review I don't like giving. I'd like to see this game be much more enjoyable in the future. Oh, and also not everyone hears the same voice lines when you do the voice wheel or answer the pager or do anything else, which is the worst crime a co-op game can commit for me, so zero out of ten, bitch! Better luck next time! Thank you all for watching, and more to come soon. A special thank you to my shady cabal of video elites and video connoisseurs, as well as channel members on YouTube. Your blood money funds production of these videos. If you'd like to see me live, I stream on this very channel on the weekends pretty regularly. Stop by and say hi if you'd like to see the best gameplay you've ever witnessed in your entire life. I swear I've never died in a video game before. My chat might tell you otherwise, but they're lying to you. Don't worry. We hope to see you there, but if you ever miss a live stream, you can check it out on the VOD channel. Varrock VODs. Clever name, I know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. I love you all very much. Thanks again, and see you next time.